Your video doesn't have to be a long form novel with 17 chapters. It can be one chapter of a longer thing. Again, don't overthink when you're creating video topics. Think about what is going to make the biggest difference. Hey everybody, welcome to the Visual Lounge. So glad that you're here with us today. We're gonna to be talking about one of those questions that is, is hard to get your head around is, how do you know what to make your videos about? You probably have a lot of options, a lot of things you could potentially do, but what do you do? How do you choose those? And we're gonna jump into that. I've got Andy and Justin with me. Thank you both for being here today, guys. So this is an interesting topic because it's one that I think it's, it's hard to, like there's not a, a technique that we can just say like, just do X and you'll always be fine because there's so many variables that go into choosing a topic. So I wanna dig into this a little bit because I think it's one that if you've ever had a, a lot of potential options before you, it's, it can be difficult to know what is gonna be the most valuable video that you can make, whether you're making it for HR or for external customers or for clients or just for your own YouTube channel, whatever it might be, it, this to me feels like a challenge. So where should we start today? For me, well, where to start it, a good question. Yeah, I mean, for me, I can I like to kind of bucket things and then let you guys pick this apart. But from my standpoint, I, I like to think of it in two, from two ways. I'm going to either create or think about topics that fit information I have to share with people. They might not be looking for it or wanting it, but I have to share it. But, you know, you think about these technical things. Maybe it's a new policy update. Maybe it's especially internally. I have to share that. Maybe I have a new uh, release of a product and people don't even know to look, I have to get that out and I have to share that information even though somebody's not looking for it. So information I have to share. The other and the one I like to lean into more are answering questions that people already have. And so what are those questions? What are those problems? What are those things people are already trying to solve that I can then create videos around to try to help? Yeah, wow. Just laying it all out there, man. Um, and it's super true, right? And and I think in, in each of those, uh, choosing a topic isn't just like, okay, I'm going to talk about this one thing. How many parts are there to this one thing, right? So I, I before we started recording, I used the example of uh, a human resources department needs to update you on the new software that we're using. Okay, is it a whole new software rollout and I have to update you on every individual thing? Or is it, we've got this one new feature we wanna talk about? Or maybe it's both. Maybe it's, we have this whole new software rollout, but if you watch a 45 minute video on all the new things, it's too much. So let me break it out into 10 different videos, right? Uh, here's how you punch your time card. Here's how you ask for time off, et cetera. And so uh, I think choosing a topic can also mean narrow your focus, right? Um, I've talked about that before. I, we've all talked about that before. Like pick your your pain point, not your pain points, right? Give them one solid uh, topic that you're going to talk about in this video uh, and, and hammer away at it. Well, I think one of the things that is, as Justin, as you laid this out, and Andy, as you, you built on it, I think when when it comes to like, internal this internal knowledge right like I, I i think that if it's information i have to share there it's i think it's so much easier because business priority becomes clear so i you know i've shared that i've worked at a pharmaceutical manufacturing plant and you know it's fda regulated and there's all these rules and regulations and you have to train people on certain things and those things become like the things that are the most priority become pretty clear. And I, at one point, I think we had, a, and this was courses, not videos. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but I think we had a, a backlog of like 400 courses that needed to be developed. I mean, this was everything from, you know, very simple things to very complex manufacturing, engineering type things, you know, things that would, you know, you're like, oh, you just need to know that too. This will kill you. Um, and, and so the priority became, I know I, I say it's so tongue in cheek anymore. It's like, oh yeah, you right. could die. Like there's like 3000 ways to die. Um, but like <laughs> those things become a little bit more balanced. And even if I would, I would imagine for an HR department, it's, it's a matter of like, what is going to give us the most return on whatever we're doing? If it's a new system, 
and we, we don't train people or teach people on doing this and it's going to stop the work. So for instance, if you rolled out like a new email system, right? And all of a sudden no one, a new internal communication system, we've never dealt with that before. And if no, you don't know how to deal with it, you don't know what you're doing, that stops the work, right? Like that's going to have high priority. And so I think those internal mm -hmm. ones, the business priority becomes a, a little bit clearer. It's, it's, I think it's much harder on the second one because it's like, well, I don't know maybe what the right. value is going to be because my audience is going to determine that. I'm not going to going to be able to determine that. They're going to tell me if this is valuable. Does that make sense? And it's that, yeah, because it's it's like looking at a blank page when you're a writer. I mean, it's I could write about anything. I could make a video about anything. And I think that's where, Justin, you've helped me in the past because it's that question of like, what do people want to know? Like, I mean, if I'm talking about, you know, we've made series on our YouTube channel about how to make videos. I've been making videos for 20 years now. Like, I don't, I, there's part of me that forgets where to start. Like, because it's been a long time since I had to go back and start like, oh, you can put one piece of video next to another piece of video and that's an edit. Like that's, I mean, the simple, simple basics all the way to like adding music to a video. And so like, you know, Justin and I've had these conversations a number of times of like, what are people asking mm -hmm. yeah and i think it de it depends because there's i mean especially if you're thinking about like external videos uh, th there's a numerous paths and ways that you can just gather um sort of content ideas but that idea of trying to take a step back and remember what it's like before you I mean, a lot like, you know, you take anybody at a, at a company after you've worked there a little bit and you kind of like understand the nuance, it's hard to remember what it was like before you either use that product or work there or what the benefits you kind of just get ingrained in it. So taking it, being able to take a step back and understand, and I even do this with like internal training, like you mentioned, Andy, um, earlier, if I have a new hire come on and I have to teach them the things that are in my brain I have to go way back and be like, oh man, what didn't I know? Or right. remember the questions that they had. And I think that's where, um, you know, just taking a step back and saying, okay, what are the things I really would need to know if I was starting this job? Like if you're talking about some onboarding stuff, for instance, you can, I could go down the list and say, oh yeah, I need, I would need to know this and I would need to know this and I would need to know, and you can start to formulate or, you know, lay out a little bit of a plan and that plan, when you get started into that, which, you know, it kind of becomes this Russian nest, uh, you know, nesting doll, because that might spur other content ideas and other video ideas to say, oh, this is a sub of that. And you can kind of really start to work your way down just based off of the qu the simple question, you know, what, what would I need to learn if I was starting this job today? Well, one thing, one thing to that, Justin, is it's. And, and I think you're absolutely right. Like you, you, you've got this curse of knowledge, you know, you don't know what you know anymore. Like you've forgotten what, what those things are. Um, but it's interesting because in that onboarding process, you're probably not going to need or want to make a video about every single one of them. So, so you're going to have these, these things internally that it's like, well, what can, what's going to make sense for a video? And we've talked about those types of things. There's lots of ways to go figure that out, but what's the most pro pressing and kind of important needs that it's going to make sense. So it's like, again, I think, okay, sorry, I got some weird noise in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's like, oh, what's the noise? Uh, anyways, the, the, the pressing things are going to, going to be, are going to be, I think, become pretty clear in an onboarding situation. And, and you're going to always have to tussle. There might be a couple there. You're like, ah, do I make a video for this? Or is it just good enough to talk about that? Or should we have a PowerPoint presentation? Like whatever option you choose to go with. But again, internally, I think like you have to go through that process of saying, what are all the pieces and what's going to make sense visually? What's going to make sense from an, you know, like it's going to make it smoother. What are the things even, and from that perspective, sort of my training brain kicks in and says, and says, what are the things that I want to be repeatable? Cause I don't want to make that video twice for every time I have a new employee. I don't want to make that video again unless it's like something's changed or different. So if I can make that video once and use it for a couple years, that that sells me on it every single time. Absolutely. Yeah, that's where that and that's where my head was at a little bit is if you can and I think we, you know, part of that too is what is your expectation out of that video? Um, you know, how wide are you, are you going to share? If I'm just sharing that and I know I got it kind of maybe a core team of people that I'm going to try to teach and, you know, for the 
near term that kind of looks to be the same. I'm okay with making some short informal videos. You know, I think being comfortable with that versus like, you know, thinking of it from a, you know, a big course or something like that. And that alone might save me a bunch of time because like you said, if I can take that two minute video that I made real quick, just showing how to do something and repeat that every time I get that question or every time I have a new hire, I can just like, oh, just check out this video. That might save me a half hour meeting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's let. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say, I, I, I actually, I really want to shift to the other challenge though, because I think again, internally, yeah. like at the end of the day, you're gonna have some business decisions to make, and you've got probably priorities. But I think I want to get because I, I'll, I'll, like, let's put a card, a cards on the table here. I have interest in understanding how to do this better for things like the TechSmith Academy, for when we do the Visual Lounge, for when we do all these things that we're doing, like how do we go about choosing topics that are gonna be the right topics for an audience? Mm -hmm. Because I find, to Andy, what Andy had said earlier, it is oftentimes a blank slate problem. And I don't yeah. know what I should even start, like what's in the realm of possibility to put on that slate? Because I'm just like, there are so many options. It's like, where? how do I narrow it down? Well, sweet. Let's get into this then. I would. I, this is my most favorite topic. <laughs> is how to yep. is how to try to come up with those, um, because I think you know, from my background, um, especially on like the SEO, the search engine optimization side, um, Google will tell you in a lot of ways what to look for and what to look out for if you just kind of do a little bit of detective work. That's what I sort of talk about it with my team anyway, as we're going through and different topics. And there are tons of tools free and paid and all of this stuff but if we can just walk through a little bit of google um, i can kind of show everybody and talk through some simple tips that might at least spur some ideas um without much work at all so so yeah let's let's walk through some of this um in this instance let's i'm going to pretend uh i i maybe either work for logitech or i create content around webcams or, or specifically this, this Logitech C920, a very popular webcam. So rather than saying like, oh man, I could, I could write about anything from a webcam, like, okay, uh, but what do people care about? Do they care about like, is it blurry or is it settings or is it this or is it that? Because I mean, anybody who's had a webcam knows it can be kind of confusing, but it's not always clear to like know what people are asking. So if you type in just Logitech C920, you're obviously going to get a bunch of stuff in Google. But one particular spot to look at, if you scroll down, and this isn't a lot of searches now, is this people also ask box right here. And so right off the bat, you know, I've got four topics that I could definitely make videos about if I were trying to help people understand more about Logitech, because these are questions Google is telling you that people are typing into the search box. People are also asking these questions. So if I was looking to make some videos on the Logitech C920, without even thinking, I would make one about the difference between the C920 and the C920S. I would make one about the C920 and the C922. I would talk about streaming, um, You know which C920 is best. That kind of ties up with these ones. And the cool thing about people also ask is, they're all sort of drop down tiers and you can click these drop downs and they will put more questions around those topics in the search. So can you, Oh, here's another one. Can you zoom with this, you know, Logitech C920? Okay. So that's another question. How can I make my C, uh, my Logitech C920 look better? So you have this whole scale of ideas where you're going from like comparing products and one question to talking about streaming, to talking about looking better, to talking about Zoom. So you've got all these different topics that you can talk about on your channel all by just typing in Logitech C920 at the top of a Google search. What's amazing too, I think with that is like, like when you clicked one of them down and it brought up new questions, I feel like once you pick your topic and you start writing, you can find yourself as the writer about that topic going down several rabbit holes. And it's like, oh, well, maybe I should answer that in another video. And maybe I should. And so like if you really try and narrow your focus to this topic, you may end up with three videos just by the nature of writing that one topic. Um, so it's it's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind while you while you get into that workflow, too. Well, Andy, then. And, and and that, you, 
I was just going to say real quick that that goes back to what you said earlier, right? Like breaking down the, like in one video, you might have lots of points you need to make, but like, that's the risk of this is that right. you could get caught in like, oh, I'm going to answer all those questions. And one video is a bad place to answer all the questions. Yeah. 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 And yes. we should talk about a video's purpose too, though. Cause like if, if, if we're talking about YouTube, I think it's a bad place to, to answer that for sure. If we're talking internal training, it might be a little different, right? Um, so you may be able to get away with it if it's if it's a seminar that everyone has to attend, but I still don't want to. So like, if you want to keep people engaged, break that stuff up into smaller sections. Um, and and I think smaller videos really is the answer. But um, but I'm not you know in charge of your HR department. I don't know how it's going to go over there. Um, I would <laughs> so. I would say the advice for YouTube is still good for training professionals. That if you're making a video, yeah. you keep it focused on that topic. Because again, yeah. you can still string topics together, but what you can't get is people, because people are going to want parts of that information. They might skip, uh, end of the day, mm -hmm. might skip your video because that's not the, yeah. that's not the question they asked. And if, but right. if they have to dig in six, seven minutes, five minutes, whatever, to find the answer to their question, it's, it's a bad experience. Yep. yep. And that's the one thing Google is in particular trying to provide more and more is the, are those quick answers. And so you don't want to mm -hmm. bury your content. You would you're almost served up med and again this might be a good thing or a bad thing but depending on what you're trying to do but you're much better just served up to create those you know six or seven different videos based off these questions and say i'm going to make the ultimate logitech c920 video like that's a bad idea yeah. um yeah <laughs> The other thing, unless um, you have some kind of credibility to that, right? Like unless you have like a billion videos already of each little question you've already answered. Now it's like, you know what? I'm going to do this big user guide video. But even then, like if someone discovers that video while looking for other things, it could shoot you in the foot. So, yeah, because again, you have to talk, you have to think through user intent. Like what are they? They're looking for mm -hmm. something. Are they looking for yeah. an overview? And if they are, are they looking for a 17 minute to 30 minute overview of a Logitech webcam? Right. Yeah. If, my, if I'm looking you for an want... overview of a product, it's probably because I'm in the early stages and I'm just trying to get some info on it. I don't want everything about right. it. Yeah. Can you I just call it for a second? User manual. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I want to call it that, like, I hope that someone listening to this, if you're not making the connection, this is like, if you're in customer education, you're in marketing, you're in sales, this is the thing to do. Like, as, as, you know, you can make awesome training content that's going to help your audience. And you've got to just pick the topics that are going to actually answer the questions people care about. Because I, I think we, we even have seen this, that we have people asking, or we have questions that we think, oh, people, everyone's going to want to know about that. When really no one cares or no one wants to know about it, but people have like, really some really basic questions i think because we are cursed with our knowledge of what we know about mm -hmm. screen recording screen capture it's really easy to overlook and forget that you know 15 years ago i didn't know any of this stuff but now right. i i don't even know that stuff that i i i have learned and forgotten and i just mm -hmm. don't even need to know anymore and i think it goes back to what i said in the beginning too where you've got the two things you, it works externally as well you might have things you want people to know about your product, but you might have a whole other slew of things that people are actually asking about your product or service that you're not answering. And so well, and it's, those it's, are finding, that, things, it's right? finding that balance. Yes. What you want to tell people about your product and what people want to know about your product are not equal. Yep. Correct. Yeah. So real quick, process. I'll show, I'll show one more. Um, I'll show at least one more. If you guys will sort of let me, um, sort of tip here no, that you can do as well. If you're it. okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if, so this is definitely not my, uh, thing I've heard it talked about in a lot of different, um, ways. So no credit goes to me here. Some people call it, uh, like Google alphabet soup or something, you know, along those lines. But what you essentially can do if you're looking for what people are typing in, Logitech C920, and then you just go A mm. and look at, you've got all these sort of things that you can sort of figure oh, out yeah. or B and you've got all the, you know, background replacement, background removal. Okay. So then maybe I'm going to click into this one and oh, oh, it's clearly somebody's making videos about these, but you can scroll down here and well, looky there, there's another people also ask with all of these questions around removing or blurring your background with your Logitech C920. So that's just another way that you can find questions and topics around a, around a topic or a product or anything that you're trying to create. Yeah. 
I've, I've actually been doing that recently. I'm trying to come up with topics for a video series that I'm thinking about, right? And it's Camtasia focused. And so I'll write in, you know, Camtasia, how to, and I do the alphabet soup thing and just see like, what's already out there? What are people already asking how to do? And uh, it's really interesting to see the results. But then it's important too, I think, to click into those results because I want to see that there's actually humans behind them and not just, just like autofill. Um, and, and usually you do find good stuff. Like you found, you know, a bunch of videos just in this first one you clicked. And so, um, and for those who are listening, obviously we're, we're typing into Google. I think that's clear, but <laughs> just. Well, I just want to point out too, that like as, as good as this is, and this is amazing. And I love this. And I, you know, I've often wondered how Justin comes up with the things that he comes up with in terms of how, how we all do defining what content we're going to go after. I, I think at the there's a, a piece of this I want to make sure we're we're anchoring back to is that the reality is is as good and Andy you kind of just alluded to this as good as Google is at, at helping us identify some of these things there are real people and that sometimes the result the the, the action is you have to ask the people behind those these questions or the, your customers or or your internal mm -hmm. audience like is this actually going to be helpful. Because I think it, the danger lies in that we can we can get really caught up in like, oh, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be great. But if the if the real people, not the robots, but the real people don't think it's gonna be helpful, then that can be challenging. And, and that could be a whole other strategy, right? And that's one that we've employed mm -hmm. for things like uh, TechSmith Academy is like, we have a survey and we ask people about, you know, we have two options for people to give us feedback. One is a ranked list. Tell us which of these would you would want to see as a, a future course, right? What what video should we make? And the other ones we just ask them like, hey, what content is not here? And those have different purposes, right? One, the rank list is very controlled. That means I'm not going to get anything that's really kind of out there. The other one is just open ended, so they can tell me make one about you know making soup, and I can then I can like, oh, I'm not going to teach people how to make soup on TechSmith Academy. So like, I I think uh, I I hope that. Balancing, we can we can balance those two out as we're looking at what topics to create. Because if we don't, I feel like it, you know, we might get mm -hmm. skewed. Because the problem with people is that you need enough people to tell you the, give you a validity. Whereas that right. that's what Google could maybe can confirm those two help bring those things together. Yeah, and and not that this yeah. necessarily is is possible for everyone, but I was gonna say we've even used like you know I use the YouTube community polls sometimes and just ask you know uh, which subject would be more interesting and I keep it broad on there just so they can actually vote and then if they want to get specific they can leave a comment and I mention that too. Um, but we've done that you know individually. You can do that on LinkedIn. You can um, you know make polls. So so there's a number of different ways and it'll it'll probably be limited at first if you don't have a huge following. But hey, if you have two people following you that are interested in your content, what kind of content? would benefit them. And then you start and then they get excited about it and talk about it. And and that's, you know, it's the snowball effect, right? Like make good content. Uh, and, and hopefully people will be interested to see more. Yeah, you can't, um, you can't replace talking to customers, users, um, potential customers, potential users on what their problems and pain points are, even internally, you know, you could you might make the assumption um, as the manager of like what your team might need to learn when they got started, or you could just ask some people who have recently started like, Hey, what did you really wish you knew when you got started? That might be a really good conversation to have to figure out what to make for the next person that starts. For sure. Uh, just a, a real life story. And I, I, I guess, and this is okay to share. I, this is a long time ago. First of all, uh, we had it, we were doing that kind of process, uh, at work and going through like what, what should be in our onboarding program. And uh, some we, they did surveys, and one person came back and said, "A map, include a map in our on this mm. stuff because I didn't know where the bathrooms were." And that's an embarrassing thing that someone might not feel comfortable asking, like, "Where's the bathroom?" Good sure. one. Like, right. I should know where the bathrooms are. But and, and obviously that's not a video, but it 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 could be that you're overlooking something so simple. Mm -hmm. And if you had a, like a little video tour walking you through yeah. that like yeah so just i i love what you said how you put it justin that we can we need to make sure we're talking to people and asking the people that just went through those experiences or you know or even if we give them a video ask them again afterwards was that the right thing because maybe you need to tweak and adjust what you've already made and or make something different that's such a great example of the curse of knowledge too right like i mean you've been there for how many years of course you know where the bathroom is like that's that's 
duh, I know where that is. I know where the kitchen is. I know where my office is. I know where the conference room is. But suddenly someone new comes in. And especially we had previous, our, our previous office space was extremely maze-like in some areas. And so um, to be able to just give those basics, those fundamentals, it's easy to forget if you've been there forever. So really kind of taking yourself back to, to step one, like, where's the front door? Do I need a key code to get in? Like, is someone going to let me in? Like all those basics of your first day. And and yeah, but that's, it, it can be translated over to making that video. Like when you get the topic and it's a basic topic, you know, take it back to the very beginning, like how to open a new project, how to import something, how to bring it, you know, it's, there's all sorts of ways you can break it down. It may feel like it's too basic to you as the person who knows it very well, um, but you've got to think of your your students or your learners or your viewers. You know what they say about assuming, Andy, right? <laughs> no, what do they say about assuming, Matt? <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but I, I, the, the other thing that came up during this video that while we were talking that uh, made me think of is Matt, your line, which I love uh, about video length, because we're talking about topics. We're talking about keeping, you know, not putting seven topics in one video. Well, how long does this video need to be? Long as possible. No, <laughs> short as possible, long yeah. as needed. Oh, I thought that was such a good cute short as possible, long as long needed. as needed. And and. Yeah, and I think that's so important to remember because if you're doing a video and it's got seven topics, break them out. It doesn't need to be that long. This could be another video. Absolutely. Well, we are close to our time, and so we want to be respectful of that because, you know, we have we have lives to get to, I suppose. Uh, we're other work that needs to be done, so let's get to our final take. I feel like we need some dramatic music when we do this part, like, final take I see drums. All right, uh, you know, I, I just kind of randomize the order here, but I, I, I feel like I always pick on someone. So who, who wants to go first today? I'll offer it up. Andy's, and, Justin? Justin's going first. <laughs> He's pointing at me, that's cool. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were raising your hand. So, all right, Justin, you're on. Final take. I think don't overthink your video topics or your choices, but also implement simple strategies to find those things out and find the questions that people are asking, whether that's literally asking the person who might have those questions or doing some simple Googling and understanding where to find those potential questions. Um, again, don't overthink when you're creating video topics. Andy. Yeah. Your video doesn't have to be a long form novel with 17 chapters. It can be one chapter of a longer thing. It can be one short video about a specific topic, not one long video about 18 specific topics. So really narrow your focus. Uh, and as Justin said, do some good research, search up the topics that people are asking uh, and answer those questions. All right, my final take is, I, I mean, you guys have really said everything that I think there is to be said in this in this way, but I, I, I think look at the resources that you have that are going to give you information. And there's so many of them, you gotta probably be careful about not trying to get overwhelmed and analysis paralysis, but think about what is going to make the biggest difference. Whether you're just trying to be helpful and you're putting it out there to community, you're working internally to improve your business operations, whatever you're trying to do, Go and prioritize the things that you think, where can I make the biggest difference? And I think that's going to give you a good list. Is it the, the videos you're always going to make in the order? No, because something might come along and push things around. But if you can use that kind of prioritization schedule and say like, these are the things that will make the biggest impact, then you have a marching order. And whether that gets done exactly in that way or not is fine, but you're always going to have something that's on deck to say like, you know what, that would make a difference. If I made a video about creating voiceover, if I made a video about how to do some basic editing. I, I did a video on how to pick a story topic or a video topic. That's gonna make a big difference. Then that's the thing that you should do and that you'll always have it ready and kind of queued up. And you'll have some decision priorities to, that are already made. So when a next topic comes up, you can say, well, where does this fit in in terms of how much it's gonna help? And that's what I would, that's what I would suggest at least. You know, here's what I'd like you all to do. We're gonna wrap up here a little bit differently. If you haven't checked out one of our other things, We've got three places I'm gonna recommend you go to. If you're just like, I don't wanna to go to anythingtechsmith.com or whatever, go check out YouTube. Look for the videos that Andy is making. Those are fantastic videos. He's got tons of great resources. We've got tons of other videos on YouTube that will be helpful for you. Second, go check out the blog. 
new content every week. It's got visual lounge stuff on there, but Justin's team is writing some fantastic topics that will help you get better at using visuals, using videos and such. And then finally, if you're learning how to make better videos or images, go check out TechSmith Academy at academy.techsmith.com. Free learning software, not software, but free learning platform to help you learn how to make these images and videos and do what we're doing, frankly, in some way, fashion or form. So you can learn from us the things that we've learned, including things like here, that we talk about. So thank you everybody for tuning in to the Visual Lounge. We're so grateful for everybody who listens and watches. Go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, rate us on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to. If you're listening to all the way to the end, we want to make sure that you're fully aware that we're here listening. You can email us at the Visual Lounge at techsmith.com. We'd love to hear from you if you've got thoughts about the show, topics you want to hear us talk about, or anything else you'd like to share with us. With that said, thanks everybody. We'll see you all next time.